I'm your host, Laura Wagenknecht. I started this show because I've talked to so many women who have expressed to me the various ways in which they have struggled or they've been challenged and how they overcame these challenges to become successful. I thought this would be a great way for women to learn from other women that life and success are not a linear road, that we all encounter challenges, especially in our careers and the workplace, and that there are many of us out here to help you. Many women I've been fortunate enough to meet can help provide insights that are unique only to women. That's why I started this show, to offer information and help to other women. For example, <coughs> women want to know how other women manage to juggle their work life, children, a husband a p or partner, and having any time for themselves to rejuvenate. They want a woman's perspective. They want your perspective. So I started this show with women in mind. This show will be all about all aspects of women in business in all business industries. The show will cover myriad ways w in which women have overcome challenges, developed strength, become resilient, and succeeded. The format is an hour-long show that will have either one or two guests per hour. Each week, you'll hear from women who are radio show managers and owners to those involved in the financial and banking industry, in healthcare, nonprofit, entrepreneurs, just starting out. Anywhere from the healing arts to the creative arts to retail to politics to manufacturing, you name it, they're all included. Ultimately, the driving question will be, how did you come to your success? Women permeate all businesses, and we need to hear from everyone, and that might include you. We already have many wonderful guests in our lineup. We have Marcy Gallagher, owner of Kilwins, Barry Barton of Stand and Deliver Asheville, Jill Sparks with the AB Tech Small Business Center, Murphy Caps of Kudzu Brands, Sharon Oxendine of the Western Women's Business Center, Marsha Whitney of Werner, Werner Center for Early Earn, Learning, Aisha Adams, owner of Aisha Adams Media, Patsy Kiever, a teacher and politician, and Meredith Elliott Powell, a global speaker about business sales and leadership. If you have an interest in being on the show, please contact Laura at laura at mosaicbusinessconsulting.com. Please stay tuned to Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. on WPVM 103.7 to hear the latest about women's experiences and learn how women can become in awe of you. To start us off, I'm really excited to introduce my first guest, Davine Dial. <clears throat> Hi, Davine. Wave to your Facebook hey. fans. Yeah. Um, so Davine is the current president and CEO of this radio station, WPVM. She is a retired wearable art designer, and due to her past as an activist in the local community and her concern about the lack of oversight in the community, she became instrumental in obtaining the FCC license to legally operate the community radio station. In this role, she is responsible for training new show hosts, like me, <laughs> and DJs uh, to do radio. She manages all the technical equipment, programs the shows, and music that are aired and works tirelessly to raise awareness of this asset to our community. <clears throat> she has a wealth of experience and a rich background, which I'm very excited to hear about in the next few minutes. So, Davine, welcome to In Awe. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's a delight <laughs> to be here. Yeah. <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> So thank, but thank you for having me on. That's great, thank you. Um, and I can't imagine that you thought to yourself, "I want to be a CEO of a radio station." When you first started out, so please tell me about your path to getting here. Well, <laughs> it is a kind of a long story, but you're <laughs> right. I would never have, in my younger years, imagined that I would be figuring out how to run a community radio station and then actually doing it. But unbeknownst, un unconsciously, I uh, actually had created the foundation to be able to do it. How so? Well, I started my own business in 1980 and learned how to <clears throat> be consistent, produce a good product, and... Um, learn how to uh, work out in the world coming from a situation 
coming from a very similar situation. Most women who were raised in the 50s and 60s, we were merely expected to get married and have children. <laughs> and that simply didn't work out for me for yeah. some reason. I'm, <laughs> So when my when my second marriage was breaking up, I decided that one of the things that I admired in women at that time was the few women that I saw in business. So I wanted to do my own business. And so it happened that um, I uh, was in New Orleans at the time, and New Orleans is a great place to cut your artistic teeth. And so what happened for me, uh, it, you need to lower it because it's going too high. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened to me is uh, being in New Orleans, highly competitive there, lots of great place to cut your artistic teeth. And so I just started making things and selling them. And anyway, I went on to uh, decide I wanted to buy a house. I sold a bunch of my stuff in New Orleans. So when the World's Fair happened in New Orleans, it was an opportunity for all the local artists to have a little retail spot. And so I made a lot of money doing it at the <laughs> time. And so I had enough for a down payment, and I wanted to buy a house. And I didn't think you got your money's worth in New Orleans. I uh, also was very intolerant of the heat there. Mm. And I ended up... Um, looking around for a place that I would be guaranteed would be cool at night. And uh, I I would, uh, in my closing uh, closing sales with, with customers, I would ask them where they were from. And when they would say that they were from the mountains, I would just have a sense of being tugged at, at that. And so I flew up here um, in 1988 to check it out, and I was immediately smitten with the area. <laughs> Asheville and, has a way of yeah, doing that to yeah, us, right? And yeah. so, and so I was able to buy a house in 1989, and I've been here ever since, and I loved it wow. here. And so, so uh, at the time in the 80s, uh, personal computers had just started coming out. Computers with. Um, Computers that in the past had been huge, giant <laughs> IBM mainframes. Yeah, yeah, they took up an so entire room or two. So personal computers <laughs> happened. When I moved here in not in the early 90s, I decided to get Mac, and I was just absolutely sm taken with how innovative it was. Mm -hmm. And I also took to it immediately. I had no idea I had a knack for technology. Wow, nice. So when you say, did you ever think you would be in charge of a radio station in your senior years? <laughs> no, because I didn't know about anything about technology. It was a whole new world that happened. Well, so as time went by, I, I um, did a lot of work on the, on the computer and learned a lot about it. Yeah. But then and on top of that, I started uh, doing what I call active, a accidental activism <laughs> in the community, live streaming, mm. um, political events, uh, town halls, CTS. CT Some people who are, who are here this, here this program are very familiar with CTS. It's a toxic waste site south of mm -hmm, Asheville. Mm -hmm. uh, Buckham County has 50 toxic waste sites. And so I would uh, live stream uh, public meetings about those that situation. Mm. Then I began live streaming political forums. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in 2014, we found out that this station, the license holder was Maine, Mountain Area Information Network. They were on the verge of turning the license back into the FCC. Oh, wow. And FCC uh, radio licenses are very coveted and hard to get. And so to turn one back in because your business model has not been able to keep up with 
the way internet technology changed because they were an internet uh, yeah, provider. Yeah. And they did mostly dial up and they didn't mm -hmm. really uh, advance to DSL and faster speeds. So by the time, uh, by 2010 or 11, their, their revenues had dropped uh, to a third of what it had been on their high point. So they were mm. at the point of not being able to pay the bills. Right, right. And not, and not be able to pay the bills to keep the station open. So we met with their board, my husband and I did, to find out what we would need to do to be considered for the license. And we did what they said. We hired a local lawyer to handle it. We hired a FCC attorney in D.C. and uh, put forth all the paperwork that was necessary. And then um, the license was, uh, the transfer of the license was granted to us in June of 2015. And so since then, I've been <laughs> learning how to run a radio station. <laughs> and thank goodness I was good with technology because that's a big part of it. Oh, yeah. Radio used to be mostly analog. Now it's mostly digital and uh, you need to know how to work all of the equipment. In. But once you know how to do it, it's much easier than it was in the past. In the past, when radio stations were analog, uh, you actually had to have like a, almost a live-in broadcast engineer. Wow. Now you don't have to do that. Yeah, as you're teaching me, <laughs> as yes. I'm learning yes. how to work the board yes. and how yes. to set us up on Facebook uh, yeah, Live yeah. and yeah. All that good stuff. Yeah. So thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, this is great. And um, so what were some of the challenges or it, it, that you encountered while trying to make that process happen? And how did you overcome those? Because clearly you have. Challenges in regards to the radio station or prior? Both. Yeah. Uh, in particular, I was curious when you said you sold all that stuff. And you wanted to get a house, so you had a real clear goal. But I was curious, you know, how, how do you go about selling everything then? Okay, so in, in a previous marriage, <laughs> my husband was, had greenhouses. Oh, wow. And we uh, sold wholesale to nurseries all in Georgia and Alabama. So I learned how to wholesale. I see. Okay. So I knew how to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also from him, I learned how not to do a business. <laughs> so I see that was a big learning <laughs> curve. So so I learned how not to do it, and I learned how to do it. Uh -huh. And so I knew uh, whenever I was living in New Orleans uh, and wanting to buy a house, knowing that I was going to have to make a change, mm -hmm. I knew I could wholesale. So I would take my design, set up a booth at the Atlanta Merchandise Market or New York in the Javits Center uh, to those uh, to that market and uh, put out a display, take orders, go back to my in-home studio, make them and send them out. Nice, nice. So that's what I did. So and that and I kind of knew how to do it all. So that wasn't a terrible challenge. I would say the biggest challenge that I've had has been in the station hmm. learning to work with volunteers and learning to, well, the challenge for me is, because I was self-employed for all those years as a designer, if I didn't like a customer, I didn't have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. I could just move on. Right. Well, I was in my little bubble, and you can't be that way whenever you're uh, in charge of a radio station and you have numerous people coming in to learn to do shows. You can't be, you can't just push people aside if you're having some sort of conflict with them. You have to learn how to work with them. That's a big challenge for me. I see. And so I've, I've had to really learn how to tamp down the warrior woman in Davine. <laughs> That's interesting because I find you so personable, so easy to um, listen to, to understand. You're very clear and concise in how you um, offer information to people, and um, you seem to get along with everyone. So I find that fascinating because – so um, what is it that goes on in your head when you say the warrior? What, what, what do you mean by that? Well – my first inclination, and it's not nearly as bad anymore, whenever I start to see 
issues arise that maybe uh, a volunteer is not participating in the way that we require them to would be to come down heavy on them. Mm-hmm. But I've learned that doesn't work very well. Mm-hmm. And and in the past, in my own little bubble that I was in, in my wholesale bubble, in my little bubble of working out of my in home studio, I didn't have to I didn't have to make adjustments to people. Yeah, yeah. So I have had to learn how to make huge adjustments and learn how to um uh, Work with the iron hand and the velvet glove. Understood. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Because I find that for myself, too, um, there's always that challenge. There's that delicate balance of how do you express to people the, the, how do you assert to people, I think, not just express, but assert to people the things that are critical and important, and at the same time, be gentle and appreciative and kind in your approach. It's, exactly. It's very difficult. It's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge, that's my biggest challenge. Wow. Well, you do it really well. So. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think so, I'm, get, thanks. I'm getting there. <laughs> no, I think you're there. I think you're there. That's well, great. That's well, great. I've been, I've been, I've had five years of practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, and speaking of which, so here you are in charge of this radio station. So um, why do you think community radio is important? Well, some people may be aware that five major conglomerates own most of the media in the country. And so in, uh, in, out there in the world, uh, you're getting not that many cross-sections of local at all. So community radio was established to bring radio back to the local community. Mm. And I grew up with local DJs, and I knew the local DJs. I grew up with the Morning Farm Report and uh, that the intimacy that develops between the listener and the station is uh, unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so community radio stations like WPVM were developed to bring back local radio to the community. And that's uh, an important thing, especially even now as um, the the uh, newspaper which covered which covers local issues. Uh, the Citizen Times, when I first moved here, had thirty, I think, thirty seven reporters. Wow. wow! And now I think they're down to five or seven. Wow! And so that is uh, a loss. Yeah, because a, a huge loss. How can five or seven people cover cover all, all of that's the news? going on? Yeah, and yeah. they and the ones that are there. I mean, they really work their yeah work, work their. They have their job cut out for them for sure. Yeah, and Gannett, <clears throat> which is owns the on the Citizen Times, they have just partnered with another huge conglomerate oh, geez. and okay. the expectation is that seven is going to be reduced again wow i have my fingers crossed that they don't yeah but yeah. so so in so something has to come in to fill in the gaps mm-hmm. and that's the role of community media so we have a lot of freedoms that commercial radio station does not have we have 168 hours to fill wow. uh, in a week. And we are able, because we're volunteer run, volunteer uh, uh, programmed, mm-hmm. our volunteers can talk about just about anything that's legal with the FCC to talk about in depth. You don't get that on commercial uh, radio at all. Mm-hmm. So, so we have the advantage of having... A lot of hours to fill, training to be able to train people to do radio, and then give them the airtime and the social media time uh, uh, when we live stream to Facebook to for people to get their story out, whether it's a nonprofit, a small business, uh, a current current political events, live music, uh, live mu- musicians who are uh, have a new CD that they want to release, they can come on with. 
are people who do live live music and you know have had the advantage of being on for and really telling their story. Right. Nice. That's really nice. And especially for those local artists and, yes. and such. Or to even a politician to give them that forum to yes. really expand on yes. instead of that one or two minute sound, uh, sound bite that they te- seem to have to have. Um, yeah. Understanding their logic of how they come, come to those decisions or those thoughts and mm-hmm. um, or the, the song that entered into the mainstream somehow that's great that's wonderful and um so um what differences i know you've talked a little bit about this but what are the differences between non-commercial community radio and commercial radio i mean i know you're talking about the conglomerates but what does that mean that well um clear channel is uh, a huge holder of a bunch of radio stations Mm -hmm. um uh, I Heart Radio, uh, Saga, these are uh, media corporations, and corporations have uh, entirely different needs. They have to please their stockholders, mm-hmm. whereas community radio uh, is financed either by a college, if a, if, a, if a college has a community radio station license or churches, I would say half of those stations that are out there, the two, over 2,000 stations, half of them are, are uh, the licenses are held by colleges <clears throat> or um, churches. Mm-hmm. So then the rest of us are nonprofits that... Um, always have finance issues and are always having fundraisers or Mm -hmm. looking for grants or something. But um, because we do not have advertisers, we're not necessarily having to watch what we say so that we don't, we don't offend an advertiser. I see. So that's one of the things. That's so that's an advantage. That's an advantage in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it's, so community radio stations are volunteer run or volunteer uh, programmed, and it's just an entirely different approach, and it's a way to bring in all aspects of the community that make your community unique. Mm-hmm. Community radio is unique, and we try to have unique programming, like mm-hmm. your show that you're doing, that you bring in <laughs> women who are uh, out there in the world doing their thing and uh, sharing their stories with people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and doing it in in a leisurely, in depth way. Right, instead of rushing and mm-hmm. trying to cram things in. Yes, yeah, yeah. And having to be, you know, professionally perfect. As as community radio people, we don't have to be perfect. We just need to create good content that is presented halfway good. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to do quality audio going out. We try to uh, increase awareness of a, a show host show by also live streaming to social media and having those audio files and video files available for our show hosts to use any way they want to on their blog, to their website, or any way that they can to help raise awareness of what they're doing in the community. That's great. That's really great. And what a service to the community. That's really nice. Um, how many listeners does this station have, and uh, what is the coverage of the radio signal that goes so, out? So <clears throat> due to our location, mm-hmm. we're in a high valley, and we're surrounded by granite mountains. And because <laughs> of that, our signal, we're, and we have 100 watts, but our signal goes 18 miles across town if you go on i-26 you pick up the station just as you pass under the parkway on i-26 south sure and we and we pick up a clear signal all the way up to new stock road on the other side of woodfin wow so that's quite the that's that's an 18 mile range right and i've picked up the station 20 miles out coming from west uh coming back to uh, uh, Asheville from west of town 
around Canton and Candler, I picked up the station very clearly there. So beyond Asheville proper, it's really looking at maybe Buncombe County plus. Uh, a pretty bit. decent bu- yeah. uh, coverage over Buncombe County. Yeah. Uh, you can go look at our uh, FCC page on our website. We have FCC uh, a FCC page, mm-hmm. and you can look at the coverage that we have on. There's a map there on the FCC page that shows you the range of our coverage, and uh, so we we are not able to afford Nielsen to uh, calculate our listenership. Yeah, I was just wondering, so how many listeners do you really have then at this point? So we, can't, so we don't know for sure. <laughs> That's one of the reasons that we use social media. So we use social media to raise awareness of the station. And from those stats, we can figure out how many people at least saw something of the video that happened. So uh, we can range from... 200 people saw the video to 3,500 people saw the video. Nice. And and so we use social media and the stats that are available from Facebook or uh, Twitter or whatever to see what kind of reach and engagement that we have with the different shows that go on. And so based on that, do you have about 7,000 or 10,000? I would say five to 7,000 listeners. Nice. And and so this station was at a disadvantage because they were dormant from like 2010 to to the uh, early 2015 Mm -hmm. and lost a lot of listeners in that process Mm -hmm. of being uh, in the silent mode. Officially, uh, when you when you're not on the air, you have to notify the FCC, and you have to be given permission to remain silent. They had some antenna issues that caused them to not be able to be on the air for a, a good amount of time. And then the original person who was the impetus for getting the station in the first place, uh, Wally Bowen, uh, developed Al- uh, ALS. Oh, wow. And because of that, he was not able to give the station the... Attention. uh, Deep attention that a station needs. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I can say, just from my own experience, I can see how much time and dedication and devotion you have to the station and what you've been able to accomplish seems to have really done extremely well, given that you have a variety of shows just not only mine, but you have four new shows in addition to that starting. Is mm-hmm. is that right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to announce what those shows are? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we we started a show in November with uh, Ryan uh, Barber, who is a wonderful local musician, and he um, runs his show on Wednesday night from 8 until 10. Uh, we have Laura's show that's just beginning <laughs> at Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. <laughs> we have Sebastian Matthews, who is doing a show called Jazz on a Summer Day, Tuesday afternoons. Mm-hmm. And he is a published uh, author, and so he wants to include writers, activists, that sort of thing, uh, poets, and people connected to that area of life, along with the collection of jazz that he has from his dad's collection. His dad was a big jazz fan, so he's got a lot of uh, collection from his dad, so he wants mm-hmm. to be able to share that with the community. Mm-hmm. Then we have um, uh, Julieta Fumberg and Chandra Russell, who are uh, partnering with a marketing, uh, uh, they have a marketing company, and they're mm-hmm. going to be doing a show on marketing small businesses, uh, businesses that are relevant to the community, local businesses. Nice. And then uh, Nina Hart is coming on to do a show uh, centering ar- around the local arts. Yeah. And then one of our one of our remote show hosts is uh, James Zurich, and he does the gospel show, and he has collected his 78 and uh, 50s and 60s gospel recordings all around the South 
uh, that uh, he is just wonderful about sharing the information that he has about it. And he's going to be doing a different show that centers on later music that's kind of on the Americana and um, uh, so that's kind of the rundown of what's happening. I think that's six six or seven shows. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's fantastic. And so quite the lineup you've got going yes. there. And so what is the procedure for new show hosts like myself to learn to do radio? Because I know there's this entire process we, ha- we go through. So, Well, uh, we are in the position to train people how to do radio. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the services that we offer to the community. And when people come in and present an idea, if it fits into what we think people are interested in, then uh, we uh, start working with uh, a person to get them trained and get them to learn how to uh, work with the equipment and uh, do radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we we have a training class. So we we train people. We have we have numerous videos of the different procedures that you're going to have to learn to do a show, and uh, so we have people when they're interested. We have them look at those videos, and then get a, start to get a taste of what they're in for. Yeah. And, and, and do they want to do it? <laughs> because it's going to be work. We want you to know that it's work, but you should always have fun doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, it's, if it's any way possible to have fun, you need to be doing that. Yeah. And so we train uh, pers- people to do live video, to work the camera, to pre-record uh, a show in our production room if if some people are not comfortable coming live on the air, so they want to just do a strictly pre-recorded show, so they can come into our production room and record and um, take live, take phone calls, do interviews around the country or around the world, mm-hmm. and plug it into our system, and it will play at the appointed time. Wonderful. And then uh, we also are partners with our affiliates of Pacifica, which is a network of uh, community stations um, around the country. There are 200 of us. And for people who do shows that are not time or or, or um, schedule um, uh, sensitive, if those shows are what they call evergreen, so that if this topic that we're talking about women in business here, if we're not if we're not uh, having to stick to a program that lists a event coming up, then that type of show, which is evergreen, can go uh, be uploaded to Pacifica Network, and they will be able to carry the show. Or people who read your description and they decide they want to carry their show. That happens around the country. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so what would, I, I know that WPPM has new programming. We just talked about that, but what programming would you like to see added to the current lineup? I would like to see more women doing anything. <laughs> And I would like to see more women doing musical shows. I would like to see some of the oh, yeah. uh, local musical f- female uh, musicians mm-hmm. do a show on women in music in general. Mm-hmm. I would love to have a farm show so that like 7.30 in the morning, farmer so-and-so comes on and talks about the prices of that week and, and the hog prices and grain prices and weather, what's in the almanac, and that sort of thing. That would be great. Because yeah. I remember that growing up. Yeah, yeah. And um, so so what we're looking for is anything that is good content that uh, entertains and informs the community. Mm-hmm. That's our mission. Awesome. Well, that's terrific. I really appreciate that. And so what have you learned during these five years of running this show at this point? WPBM. I shouldn't say this show, but WPBM, the radio station. I've learned that uh, <laughs> radio is a magnet for drama. <laughs> <laughs> and I've learned how to keep it out of the station. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> and do tell, do tell. How do you keep drama out of work? <laughs> well, I learned we we've learned to watch for the red flags. Uh, so red flags. Uh, in in the beginning, we didn't quite know what to do about it, but now if we see uh, red flags, we know to nip it in the bud. Mm. And so uh, it's not. Uh, it's 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 unique to media that it tends to attract drama and we have just learned how to keep it to a minimum because it's disruptive yes and it's stressful yes so i learned that i learned obviously i learned the technology how to program how to uh work with people to bring in quality programming from pacifica as i mentioned earlier Mm -hmm. and um learn how to keep this board operating. This board has <laughs> modules here. They will come out and we can switch them out and uh, learn how to improve people's audio. So nice, nice. audio goes out that is uh, good quality because you can have, you can't have bad audio no, when no, you're going out yeah. on the radio. Yeah, You have to have quality audio. And um, I've learned that some people will come in and give you glowing um, information about them, but you're going to have to check because I would say a third of the people who have come in with great promises have not been able to fulfill the promises that they made. So we, um, if, we can't, if we can't verify that people are who they say they are, we now do a background check. Nice. Nice. Okay. So there's, there's, it, so every person is vetted to some degree. Yes. Then. Every person good. is vetted. Yeah. And, and you have to, because you're going to be on the air. It's a huge responsibility and you're going to be presenting yourself to the community, but you're also representing the station mm-hmm. and the responsibility of putting, uh, sticking to the FCC rules and, and doing what you need to do, uh, those people have to be responsible. Yeah. They have to be willing to take on that responsibility and uh, do a good show. Well, and I can honestly say from my own experience, I've been here how many times already? We've had conversations. We've had conversations via emails, et cetera. Then we've also been here for the trainings. So I think that in general, it is a very, very thorough process. It's not a quickie, let me just start a show tomorrow. It's it's. It takes months to really get up and running and be uh, appropriate, as you well, say. Well, it depends. Uh, if someone is coming in really green who hasn't done anything. That would be me. Then that's a, <laughs> that's a big uh, training process. We have some people come in who are, are, have past radio experience. I see. And uh-huh. so we can, we can handle those people differently. We can let them know what our regulations are and what our responsibilities and, and policies are. But if they're already uh, used to working a soundboard mm-hmm. and operating on the station, then then their training process is much easier. Yeah, yeah. And you alluded a while ago to uh, volunteers. So can people in the community volunteer at the station? And if so, what would their process be look like? Well, you could volunteer to do a live show, or you can volunteer because you love the idea of radio and you want to help see that the radio station runs well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, one of our directors was in yesterday. He has a lot of vast experience with being a vice president of a corporation, and he brings his volunteer, he he brings his expertise uh, into the station and uh gives Im- gives brings his strengths to the station mm-hmm. to help us be a better station nice so we strive to be the best station in town <laughs> good job <Yeah. laughs> so so yeah. uh and the station is attracting quality people like yourself oh, and okay. like the other people <laughs> who are starting their shows yeah. And um, we just we want to do a, a great job for the community to the best of our ability and volunteers who come in who want to help us get to reach that goal. Nice. Then then we will work with them. That's really great. That's 
I appreciate that. Um, so what would you tell women, because the show is about women, about achieving their dreams and whatever the dream may be? What would you tell women? My, well, one of my dreams was to own my own home. Check. And <laughs> uh, no one in my family had ever broached that idea of a woman doing it. Plus, this was in the late 80s, it had not been that long that women could have credit cards in their name and have a credit history. Right. So um, that was that was uh, right at the beginning of women actually being able to uh, acquire property a mar a mortgage yeah wow so so i was able to do that and it just it, i just thought well i'm just going to do it and nobody's going to stop me <laughs> i'm going to do it and and so that's that's one of the things that i hear a lot about you know i'm just going to keep doing it or that people who are really successful have a drive but what what underlie what is under you know, the undercurrent for that drive that makes you um, for want me, that. Yeah. I was born with a naturally rebellious spirit, <laughs> and so when you tell me I can't do something, or if the pressure from society is that you need to stay in your uh, in your lane and and not branch out, I just I I can't stand it. I can't stand it, and I have to prove them wrong. Okay. <laughs> and so proving them wrong is what drove you to wanting to say, not only can I get my house, I'm going to get my house. Yes. And doing those necessary steps to get there. Yeah. And because, you you know, you got to establish that, that you're reliable. You've got to look good on paper. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to pay the bills. You have to pay, pay the, the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So those are the th steps that you have to do to be able to, when you have a dream, you're going to have to work to get to that dream. Right. Now, I cannot ever, I could not say that I ever dreamed of having a radio station <laughs> in my in my life at all. Mm -hmm. uh, when I met my husband, he had a collection of vintage radios, and we we loved his collection, but it never it never crossed my mind 15 years ago that I would be where I am now. But the Act the, what I have done in my life gave me a, ba a, a foundation to do it, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some dreams, you don't even know that you have a dream. Mm -hmm. We just knew from my past experience doing uh, ac accidental activist work <laughs> that there needed to be more oversight in the community. And... Uh, so it it fit in that the uh, video work that I had done and uh, awareness of local issues gave me an awareness that there needs to be more oversight in the community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> and, um, so if people wanted to get more involved in the uh, radio station or learn more or listen to another show, et cetera, how can listeners get that information? Well, if you are interested in doing a show, you can go to our website and it's, there's a uh, link for new show host information. And you would contact, you could sign, you could fill out the contact information and send us a email and say I'm interested in doing whatever and then um, we follow up and meet with an interview and start vetting you mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is that um, link for the wpvmfm.org okay so wpvmfm.org fm.org okay great um, well so are there any other suggestions you'd have for our, our lady listeners out there that might have an interest in um, getting involved in radio or getting involved in business of any kind that you would say, other than just see searching out your dream, what would you offer as far as ideas? Well, I think it, I think it depends upon how hungry you are hmm. uh, because if you – 
are in a situation where you th- you you're not very hungry, then you're not very motivated mm. to get out in the world and do something That's different. True. But there's a lot of women who uh, the old way doesn't work for us anymore. That was my case, and that may be your case. And in that case, then I would say, put your put your foot forward and go out and make your mark in the world and don't let anything stop you very nice very nice and 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 people will try to stop you we have uh, we have had our own issues here (laughs) and I just will not let anyone stop me very nice very nice do you want to expand on that or do we want to just close out with that uh well if you look up (laughs) <laughs> Davine Dial plus defamation, you will begin to see a little bit of what I've had to contend with. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was a big one. Uh, but you, you won. I you did. You succeeded, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is great. Yes, yes. Congratulations. That's great. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I want to say thank you so much, Davine, for a wonderful interview and for all of your um, expertise and your talents. It's much appreciated and you are listening to WPVM LP in Asheville North Carolina 103.7 on your dial and globally at WPVMFM.org so thank you very much and I hope everybody has a wonderful day